Oh boy, we've got a really exciting piece of software here today. Rust Desk, the open source team viewer alternative. Now, if you've never used team viewer before, it's basically a really, really easy to use remote desktop software that lets you take remote control of somebody's computer to solve technical issues, or if you're a tech support scammer, I guess you use it to lock people's machines and then demand Google Play cards as the ransom to unlock them. Okay. Ma'am, why right, did you do this? So. Why did you do this? Ma'am, why did you do this? Um, hold on. Let me go ahead and do the next card for you then, Steve. But TeamViewer might honestly be one of the worst remote desktop apps ever created. In fact, these days, it's probably used more often by tech support scammers than actual legit tech support workers or people trying to just help their mom set up Skype or set up their email. And part of the reason for that is TeamViewer is not totally free, right? Of course, you can download it for free, uh, but there's a business version that you have to buy if you want to use TeamViewer commercially. But they very arbitrarily decide what is commercial use and what isn't. Lots of people have had their service cut off, their team viewer service cut off, right in the middle of them trying to help their parents or their grandparents with their computers. Obviously, that's not commercial use, but hey, that's what happens when you use proprietary software. They ultimately have control of it and they get to decide when you're allowed to use it and when you're not allowed to use it. Many such cases. However, Rust Desk is AGPL and you can even host the servers, the middleman servers for yourself because uh, this isn't a peer-to-peer -peer connection. It does have a relay server in between you and the client. But again, that relay server can be self-hosted. So much better than TeamViewer. And this bad boy here is also cross-platform. So you can run it on Linux. You can run it on Mac. Uh, you can run it on iOS. You can put it on Android. I know it's even available in the Ftroid repository. I didn't even bother checking if it's in the Google Play Store because I don't use that crap. But hey, maybe it's in there. If it's not, go ahead and install Ftroid. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're not using that on an Android phone. It's even available in the AUR. So if you're running an Arch-based distro, it's very easy to install from there. In fact, that's how I have it installed on my machine. So let me show you Rust Desk. It's really simple. That's the beauty of it. Uh, sure, you could set up RDP or VNC and have a very fine-tuned remote desktop, but that's a lot more work to set up. Remember, this is supposed to be like a team viewer alternative, something that you would use to help your grandpa with the computer. So when you open it over to the left, you're going to get this ID. All right, this is what your client is going to have to give to you, their ID, and then they're also going to have to give you the password. And then over on your Rust Desk client, you're going to put in their ID here, and then when you go to connect to it, it's going to prompt you to put in that password they gave you. Now, this should go without saying, but this ID and this password is very sensitive information, okay? You, anyone in the world who knows this ID and password is gonna be able to connect to your computer. So that needs to stay between you and your client. What I would recommend doing is have them change the password after the session is done. Okay, so it's very easy to do that. You can just click here to refresh your random password and look, now it's totally different. So do that after it's done. That way, if somehow the ID and password got leaked, someone's not gonna be able to just connect to it really easily. Um, the ID, well, you can't change the ID unless you're running your own servers. So by default, it's just configured with one of Rust Desk's servers. They have a few different ones, uh, generally pretty low resource servers, but they're fine for just regular remote administration. Uh, but anyway, like if you try to just put in something here, like let's see, it, it says that it, the, first letter, the first letter has to be a letter. So we'll do like A, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, and then like seven, eight, just so it's the same length and it's gonna say not yet supported by the server. So I don't know if this is like maybe something that they're going to add in the future, but 
As far as I know right now, the only way you can change your ID is if you're actually running your own server. Now, if you wanted to switch this to your own, because like I said, by default, you're going to be using Rust desk servers for this. Uh, they even tell you that down here where it says ready for fast connection, set up your own server. To do that, just click on these three dots here, and then you can go to where it says ID slash server or ID slash relay server. And then this is where you'll populate the information for your server. So here you can just put in uh, whatever the IP or the URL is. And also, well, I'm not gonna go into how to configure these servers in this video, but it is possible to configure all of them just on one box. And if you do that, you only have to fill out the ID server and then the rest is just gonna take care of itself. So that would probably make it easier for your client. That way they only have to put one domain in here. Now, optionally, when you're setting up your Rust desk server, you can make it require a key. I believe it's an RSA key to connect to the server. But of course, that's going to greatly increase the privacy of your relay server. So like random people that happen to know the URL are not gonna be able to connect to it. But cryptographic keys do tend to confuse some people. So you kind of have to decide if the extra security is worth the increased complexity for you to, you know, help grandma with her computer, right? Uh, or, you know, maybe your grandma is a lead hacker herself and she'll call you a noob if you're not using a key. That's a decision that you have to make for yourself. Anyway, let's get to the good part. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and connect to one of my remote machines. Why don't we try the Windows one here? And it started on the other screen, so I'll just drag her over here. All right, and so you can see I'm on my uh, Windows machine here. This is on the same network, uh, but obviously you could also use this over the internet. Like there was no configuration of IP addresses or anything like that is needed. Like you just use IDs and passwords, much simpler than setting up like RDP or something like that. Um, but yeah, from here I can do pretty much anything that I could on the machine if I was sitting right in front of it. You know, I can pop open uh, the run prompt here and it also open my uh, XFC application finder because that's the same shortcut. But anywho, in Windows, I can open the command prompt and then you know I can do anything that I might need to do in there. I don't know why I'd be pinging because obviously that's gonna work if I can remotely connect to it, but you get the idea. Uh, I can open up control panel, so you can do things through the GUI. Uh, of course, it's not super fast, the connection, since I'm using one of uh, Rust Desk servers. If you want better speed, definitely go ahead and set up your own server and also make sure it's high bandwidth and uh, all of that good stuff. Uh, also, it would be good to make sure that it's like physically in between you and the client. Like that would be the ideal situation. Um, but for just general remote administration, you don't really need to have, like it's okay if you have some input lag, right? You're not gonna be remotely playing a game on your client's machine, that would just be silly. You're just gonna fix whatever problems they have and then disconnect. Um, now, notice how when I try to, so this is like Rust Desk on the client's machine, right? Notice how when I mouse over it, it turns gray and I can't do anything within the app. So that's to prevent me from, it's some protection that's put in, right? Because you can actually start this um, with more restrictions. Like you can start it where the person can just view your screen, right? They can't move the mouse, they can't type or anything like that. And this is to prevent you from being able to go in and uh, change that. Like here is where you would change that. And you see, I can't change anything but on windows by default it just gives you access to everything so that's another thing to keep in mind um if you're a windows client that's running this to get some kind of help is maybe you want to disallow all of these like don't allow keyboard and mouse or clipboard access or sound or copying files let them look at the problem right like any decent technician is probably going to look at the computer for a little bit and observe the symptoms of what's happening before they start changing things. And they can just ask you for access. So like if I come back to my system here, 
um, and open up, let's see. Oh, you know what? I think it's actually back in the, um, yeah, here it is. My mic was like in the way. So here you can get a, um, let me just minimize this for a second. So here you can get like a way to chat between the client. Let me see if there's a way I can show you this and the client at the same time. It's being a little funny. All right, so here, um, by de like I said, by default, you might wanna just not let them have any permissions and then the technician can say like, can I have access to the mouse and keyboard? And then see, this will pop up over here, and then that's when you can go ahead and give them that access. And notice how, again, if I try to send something back in here, it'll actually let me type. And uh, I believe the client can see this. I'm not sure 100% on that, um, but it's not going to actually send it through. Like if I pull up my chat window over here, I don't see any responses back from the client. So yeah, Rust Desk is a pretty cool GPL remote desktop application. But speaking of it being GPL, uh, Rust Desk doesn't seem to be 100% FOSS because it has a proprietary dependency called Scyther. Maybe that's how you say it. Uh, but that's not open source. Now, I don't know whether or not this is gonna be considered a GPL violation like this user alleges to. I know that the standard Linux kernel also has proprietary blobs in it, mostly drivers for Wi-Fi cards, things like that. But yet Linux is one of the most widely used GPL licensed softwares in the world. Uh, but regardless of that, I just thought it was worth mentioning this since some people are insistent on being completely abstinent towards proprietary software. And look, that's fine. If you wanna do that, like I've you know got nothing against you doing that. Personally, I take more of a harm reduction approach by just using as little proprietary software as possible to accomplish my goals. But I'm still using like proprietary drivers for my NVIDIA card. I've got a proprietary BIOS on my desktop. Uh, also, Rust Desk, has support issues for Wayland clients, which, yeah, I guess that that's still a pretty common thing in the Linux software world. But hey, maybe one day Wayland is going to have the same widespread support that X11 has. But besides those edge case problems, if you even consider this GPL thing to be a problem, I think that Rust Desk is a pretty great remote desktop app. It's definitely way better than team viewers. So uh, give it a try and let me know what you think. Like and comment, tag the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey. Have a great day.